Sarsarahan Plateau. This is the roof of Anatolia, endlessly high and endlessly cold. Here, life is in no hurry. Nature does not care about anyone. It just goes about its own way. Life in northeast Anatolia is stuck between winter and spring. Summer is scarce. Long winter determines the way all creatures live. Very few animals survive in these harsh conditions. The fox does not sink in the snow when it walks. Its body is light and its soles are covered with fur. It's easy for the fox to walk on the snow, but difficult to hunt. However, it depends on its acute sense of hearing. It moves slowly and silently to approach the prey without being noticed. Its most important nourishment is the rodents wandering under the thick layer of snow. Countless plunges made into the snow for prey. Although it fails in most of its tryouts, it catches the prey through its determination. It's surprising, but the fox almost never sees its prey during the winter. It concentrates on the sounds and movements of the mice under the snow so hard that it sometimes fails to notice the danger coming from above. In the wilderness, hunters are preys at the same time. Winter in the Kars Ardahan Plateau is so harsh that the lake Childer in the northeast freezes completely. Around this lake lives another species that has solved its feeding problem cunningly like the fox, the Armenian gull. Food is beneath the snow in the plateau and under the ice in the lake. The Armenian gull pierces holes in the thin layer of ice near the bank of the lake with its strong beak. Its reward for waiting patiently at the hole is young fish. Here, defending against other gulls is as important as opening holes for survival.
there is a lot of competition. The long and harsh winter predominating the region confines people in their homes. Life mostly passes behind walls and windows. Snow blockades both life and transportation. Jan's Cham and Allahu Akbar Mountains separate the Kars and Ardahan plateaus from eastern Black Sea like a solid wall and harshen the climate. The Scotch pine forests that were able to survive until this day stretch only along the northern slopes of these two mountain ranges. Located at a height about 2,000 meters, these forests are made up of unique scotch pines growing at the highest point in Anatolia. Once, Scotch pine forests used to cover a wide area in the interior parts of North Anatolia. The destruction going on for ages, the wars that occurred in the past century, excessive lumber production, reclaiming forest area for pastures and cultivation, excessive grazing and illegal felling have devastated these forests. Today, Scotch pine forests cover only a small part of the northeast Anatolian plateau. The number of wolves in Anatolia is rapidly declining. There are a small number of wolves living in the Karsadahan plateau. Here, wolves spend the winter on lower slopes and inside the valleys because the snow is not as much in these parts and it is easier to find food. However, the mammals they hunt have almost become extinct due to reducing forests and excessive hunting. Moreover, unrestricted wolf hunting has slimmed down the survival chance of the wolves. As a result, hungry wolves have started to approach settlements and garbage dumps. Coming more frequently across men, Wolves are considered to be monsters by the locals, leading them to kill wolves wherever they are seen. Luckily, when the snow begins to melt with the final days of the winter, Wolves head for high plateaus and mountains and gradually leave the plains.
Kaysadehan Plateau is the coldest region of Turkey. At the end of the long winter, the soil rapidly loosens up with the coming of April and life impatiently waits to revive. Meadows and grassland that have kept silent for months will be teeming with numerous creatures in a few weeks. Karsadahan Plateau revives in spring. Having taken wing from Africa, black kites will continue to fly to its north. Like certain predators, some of the black kites take shelter here. In fact, some of them stay here to spend the summer. With the coming of spring, marsh harriers have also taken their place around the lakes and started cowting one another to breed. High plateaus with exuberant meadows and small lakes present several alternatives for the ruddy shellback to breed. That's why it's possible to see ruddy shellback all around. However, these puns are not enough for larger birds. Cranes need a larger and more sheltered pond or marshland to breed. When spring comes, they immediately get to work and repair their nests that have been largely damaged during the winter. Cranes have to be quick because here warm months end in a jiffy. With the need of wide plains and fields to feed, Cranes scrape the earth to find bugs, mice and worms, but they also engage in the fight against the pests. They will be going back to Africa with their young ones at the end of the summer. The Putka Lake of Ardahan in the Great Plateau of Northeast Anatolia is one of their last resorts. This small lake, hosting a great many bird species, draws nature lovers to itself. In this plateau, 
The Kura and the Kars rivers spring from the Allahu Akbar mountains. Kura is also fed by the Yalnuzjam mountains. Brooks running down the mountains feed these two rivers. The journey of Pristine waters begins in these cold slopes and end in the Caspian Sea in the north. The snow that accumulates during the long winter on the northern slopes of the Yalnuzcham and Allahu Akbar mountains ranges facing Caucasia rapidly melts during the month of April with the rainfall. Kars and Kura rivers overflow their banks and the water covers all the plains. The snow that blockades the roads during the winter is now the source of abundance. The Kura River runs through valleys with a sparse forest cover. In spite of the denseness of vegetation, the river looks murky throughout the year as the earth easily hollowed out with rainwater and domestic wastewater from the settlements mixes in its waters. The amount of organic matter in the water is very high and the amount of oxygen is close to the lowest value necessary for living beings. The brown trout lives in these waters along with 16 known species of freshwater creatures. In addition to harmful conditions like dam constructions, excessive fishing, and addition of unfamiliar fish species into the ponds of the region, the pressure on various species of fish has grown with pollution. These conditions lessen the amount of fish in the region. Following the overflow, various species rush into the Kura River and brooks. As one of its visitors, the black stork spends most of its time feeding in the brooks. It digs in the bottom of the brook with its long beak looking for fish, frogs and worms.
The Kar Sadahan Plateau is now ready to entertain animals that have spent the long winter months confined in their dark and stuffy sheds. Plains, slopes, forests and marshy grassland revive them during the spring. The major livelihood of the locals is raising cattle. As the most cherished wealth of households, livestock share the wetlands of the region with wild birds during the few summer days. However, most of the time wildlife is harmed by this fellowship and makes it difficult for water birds to build their nests. Early and intensive grazing result in a reduced amount of vegetation each year. Skyething is one of the nature-friendly methods used in the Karst Plateau. Although it seems like cutting the grass leads to the death of plants before finishing their natural life cycle, it actually ensures that continuity of these rare wetlands. The grass cut during midsummer become animal feed in winter. Storks look for their daily share among the cut grass as visitors of the rich meadow. The most distinguishing feature of the Kar Sadahan Plateau is its high plateaus. These places at over 2,000 meters of height, where nobody lives during the winter, become crowded in summer. Those who migrate to these generous plateaus raise livestock and geese. They raise geese which have a high nutritional value for their own needs, but livestock is their major source of income. Water and earth is not yet polluted with chemicals and fertilizers and producers have not lost their original nature as agricultural production is not intense. Having preserved the richness of wildlife, the region has a significant potential of nature tourism with living spaces still left untouched. It is possible both to raise the living standards of the locals and to preserve the wildlife in the region by sustainable use of natural resources in animal husbandry.
Carson Ardahan plateaus are among the last resorts in Turkey where nature and man can live in balance. Here, man and nature can survive without harming each other. The preservation of this balance is a source of hope not only for the locals, but to entire Turkey and the world as well. <laughs>